Tonight, I'm going to photograph a beautiful nebula and star cluster known as the Rosette Nebula. It's an emission nebula that lies about 5,000 light years away from Earth with a stunning open cluster of stars in the center of it. My telescope will pull this beautiful structure in space in for a closer look, and I'll collect several hours worth of exposures to create my final image. The Rosette Nebula really is a beginner-friendly and city-friendly nebula in Monoceros. What do I mean by a beginner-friendly target? Well, the rosette is big and bright and full of intense hydrogen gas. Even astrophotographers using a regular DSLR camera in the city have a chance at capturing this one. I'm here in a Bortle 7 and I'm going to capture it using a one-shot color dedicated astronomy camera. My first image of the Rosette Nebula was taken with an ordinary stock DSLR camera and telescope, and it turned out amazing. There's no astro modification needed for this target, although it will certainly help. Because it's new moon tonight, I get to shoot beautiful full color images. I'll use my one shot color dedicated astronomy camera without a filter to capture as natural looking image as possible. My goal for tonight is to collect a wider field of view on the rosette than I have in the past. There's some really cool outer nebulosity around the rosette nebula, the stem as I've seen it referred to, and that's what I want to collect tonight. The camera and telescope I'm using tonight is a William Optics Redcat 71 and an ASI 2400MC Pro. If you want to photograph the rosette nebula, stick to focal lengths of about 500 millimeters and shorter if you want to capture the entire thing. That of course depends on the size of the sensor you're using. This one happens to be full frame. One of the toughest parts about shooting the rosette nebula is intentionally ignoring the showstopper known as M42 or the Orion Nebula nearby. And trust me, I thought about shooting the Orion Nebula again tonight, but it's the Rosette's turn. This is how I usually plan my imaging sessions. I use a free software called Stellarium, which is a free planetarium software I have on my computer. And I actually have overlaid a picture of my actual backyard, which is super helpful because now I can see exactly when the Rosette Nebula will get above my house and when it will eventually run into my tree. So it's great for planning. I can also see exactly how big the object will be in my camera sensor using my exact telescope magnification. This is the sensor size here around the Rosette Nebula through my telescope. And as you can see, I can capture the whole thing with a lot of room to spare. What I can't see just yet is that stem of outer nebulosity and I'll have to do some test exposures in the field to frame that part upright. Ooh. It has been seriously cloudy over the last two weeks and I've been going a bit stir crazy. I want to thank everyone that offered me to use their remote observatory data, but I just can't seem to get excited about pictures I didn't take myself and clicking a mouse doesn't count. It looks like I'll get about two to three hours of clear sky time tonight before the clouds return. That should be enough to complete my image of the Rosette Nebula from the backyard. I'm taking images here in the Black Dog Observatory as well. There's no reason not to run this system every clear chance I get. I'm just still not used to this. With the color camera system running outside of the observatory, in here I'll capture luminance data using my monochrome camera and apply that to my final image of the Rosette Nebula. It should be an interesting experiment to see how much that extra luminance data adds to the final picture. So your Andromeda photo got a lot of likes. I know. How many? Not like over 5,000. Holy smokes. You set yeah. the bar pretty high. I know. And why aren't you out shooting with me tonight? It's too cold. It's not a competition, Ash. It's currently minus 14 degrees Celsius and I've got both rigs running and I know what you're thinking, why wouldn't I just use the observatory on a night like this? That's why it's there, right? The convenience. I couldn't help myself but to set up two rigs on the first clear night I've had in two weeks. This way I can also double my exposure time which would really help me with my image. Both setups are running in the backyard right now but it's very cold and the seeing is really bad. So I'm second guessing shooting luminance with my monochrome camera in the observatory to combine that with my broadband color data. So I've since switched to narrowband H alpha with the monochrome camera. And then the wide field setup continues to shoot broadband 
full color RGB. In my test exposures, I do see a faint rosette nebula in there, but it's just buried beneath a washed out sky of light pollution. So I'm gonna have to just have faith that there's a beautiful color image in there somewhere that I can dig out in the processing. But by shooting the Neuroban H-Alpha in the other system, at least I know I'll be able to apply some impactful dynamic hydrogen details of the nebula and improve the image that way. That's the plan anyway. I always share my final processed astrophoto at the end of the video, but this time I wanted to show you the transformation that data went through to get there. Astrophotography from the city makes you work for the image. Don't get discouraged when your pictures look washed out and faint. You need to have faith that there's a great image in there and it's your job to bring it out.